team comprising the armed forces, other government... What's up, Ziggy? You look down. 20 trillion cable channels and I can't find that kid's show anywhere. Hey, hey, hey. Pull the phone, Zendo. There it is. Access now. So today I have something a little bit, um... I, I don't really know what this is, if I'm going to be honest. But before we get into that, yes, I am no longer wearing glasses. And I have a beard now. And it's been two years. Anyway, I think we need to talk about where I've been. Since I left YouTube in 2020, a lot has happened. I worked at Chick-fil-A for a year until they realized they never actually hired me. Wait a minute, you don't work here. I started a very successful swing dance group, which actually led to me getting a wonderful girlfriend. <laughs> and now I work for an insurance company. Would you like insurance for your insurance? Excuse me, would you like insurance? What am I going to do with insurance? Not to brag or anything about how smart I am, but I'm really smart. I graduated high school with a GPA of four. Are you sure you graduated high school? And to address the rumor, no, my beard is not dyed and anyone who is saying that is lying. So yeah, that summarizes where I've been. Now let's get on to the topic of today's video. Earth, I got one message for you. We're back! Star Scouts Discover NASA was released in 1995. With this being the first episode of the Topic Watch show, I really wanted to make sure it was the best it could be. And so I went looking around for something I could talk about that would actually teach me how to make my own TV show. And that's when I found Star Scouts. Throughout this video, I'm gonna be taking notes and inspiration to figure out how to run my own TV show. So yeah, let's get right into the video. The movie starts off with a very energetic introduction to Ziggy and Zando. Hi, I'm Ziggy. It's time for another adventure in space with me and my buddy Zendo. We're Star Scouts! Ziggy being an abomination of what computer-generated imagery can create, and Zando being a cute little innocent TV. Ziggy explains that NASA had recruited him and Zando to help a group of kids create a TV show, which this brings up a lot more questions than answers. Such as, why is NASA working with an alien? Why is NASA letting an alien anywhere near kids and... Hello? We get a number of jump scares throughout this movie, but none is more heart-wrenchingly terrifying as this one. <laughs> Moving on from that, we see a news station talking about something that's a little bit strange. Children have been seeing something in their TV static, something adults cannot see. There's something adults are not allowed to see. Hey, hey, why can I come in, huh? I told you, Dad. No. Adults allowed. 1,855 days. I've been going through something. Did you get all that, honey? Apparently, these aliens are using a local cable channel to recruit Star Scouts. Sign it off. New face filters on Instagram today. Nice job, team. The local officials have no idea what's going on and just kind of brush it off as kids being kids. The group of kids who are producing the show claim that this news coverage is going to boost their ratings. But it's not like this is positive coverage of a show. If my parents found out that there was a show practically possessing children, I really doubt they'd let me watch it. I'm not claiming to be a parent. I'm not claiming to know what I think is best. But I think if your kid is claiming to see aliens, something could be wrong. Sheila claims that she won a contest in order to be the producer of a show. Now, I think I can mark that off my list as I was simply just born into wealth. Script, check. Being a producer is a very demanding job. So I was preparing myself for the challenge. The producer of this kid's show, Sheila, has a lovely conversation with her mom. Your very own TV show. <laughs> Don't get too excited, mom. This astronomy shows 
just what they call a means to an end. And that is exactly how I feel about YouTube, except it'll never end. No matter how much I try to run away from it, it'll always catch up with me. Anyway, Sheila tries to call Tucker because he's running late. Wake up call to Tucker. Oh no, I forgot to call Tucker. Oh, come on. Somebody answer. There's nobody home. There has to be a truth of Tucker? So did you like get everything worked out with Cotton B? Sheila, you didn't just make me co-producer because my uncle's an astronaut, did you? Wait, I just realized. I forgot to ask somebody to help me with this video. Um, who should I pick? Oh, I know. Time to call for some help. Hello? Hey man, it's Topic Raw. I was just wondering if you'd be willing to help me out with the video. Never again! Well, he wasn't any help. Ziggy and Zando end up heading to Earth in their pizza-looking spaceship to help out the Cosmo Club for Kids. Oh gosh, that's a terrible name! Zando begins talking about Earth and how much he misses it, and he just begins reminiscing on all of his precious memories there. Oh, my circuits miss our human Star Scout friends. It's been a long time. And then Ziggy comes out of nowhere and licks him with his tongue, and then gives a provocative wink at the camera. And there's a great joke I could make here. But I'm not gonna make it. Anyway, we're introduced to the Cosmo Club and we find out that they're having some struggles on set. First day on the set and all is not well. We've already been introduced to Sheila, whose entire character arc is about how selfish she is, which gets resolved about 15 minutes into the movie. We also get to meet Sheila's older brother, Wilson, who looks like he hasn't showered since I last uploaded. <coughs> Believe it or not, the little short kid Tucker actually has the responsibility of being the host of the show, and Tucker's uncle, astronaut captain Charles P. Conrad Jr. is the guest for this episode of the show. And according to my research, he was a part of missions such as Gemini 11, Apollo 12, Skylab 2, and that's it. Your databank is missing one vital piece of information. Captain Pete was once a star scout. Oh, sorry, it's just a little mistake. A big mistake, I'd say. Devante is the art director. If I'm the art director, shouldn't I be directing the art? Yeah, you directed to me, I directed from there. And Heather is the camera woman. The show looks great. It's gonna be a big hit. Uh, thanks. Come to think of it, I could use a camera person, but I need someone expendable. As a producer, we really have to be on top of everyone. Someone who would do whatever I want them to do. That's what I like most about this job. You get to boss people around. Oh, I know, my girlfriend. This is stupid. I'm not gonna do this. Why not? Are you serious? Babe, think of the channel. Or the money. Money? Money. Yeah, I signed it. But money's money. Wait, Ethan gets to boss Reese around? The show, within the show, begins with Tucker showing off his astronaut uncle, who inexplicably has super speed. Yeah! Glad to be here, Tucker. His super speed is never acknowledged by anybody within this film. Tucker's uncle begins explaining the history of how astronauts got to the moon. Now, to be fully honest, I did not finish science for high school or middle school. So nothing he says really makes a lot of sense. To prove that this educational segment is really confusing, I got a group of kids together to watch this and explain it back to me. Here are a couple things I learned from this epic video. First of all, Chinese people can literally survive anything. Uh, I thought it was like a little weird. Me personally, I hate science, but I will say that that was very interesting. Um, I'm lying, it wasn't. I didn't get anything out of that besides the dove shooting sparks out of its butt. 
Dove shooting sparks out of its butt. Great representation of a person's bottom two hours after Taco Bell. Now that's totally cool. Hey, sorry, can you step back just a little bit, baby? Yeah, sure. Whoa, not that much. I hardly moved at all. That was a giant step backward, if you ask me. Wilson is acting like he's making a TikTok instead of working when Mr. Wembley walks onto the set and blows his nose with a Yoda dying sound effect. I mean, seriously, listen to this. <coughs> also, it's never really explained who Mr. Wembley is. He's just kind of there and he's constantly complaining. I want my stage returned to mint condition. Miss Lime will be here any minute. Well, hurry up, Wilson. And Fix that darn stage phone and fix this air conditioner. I, I think I'm catching the cold. Bald, 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 bald. I find it really weird that one key plot point is that adults can't see the alien, but kids can. I feel like children would be a lot more scared of something looking like this than adults would be. What in the world is that? The aliens have finally arrived to Earth. Yippee! Hello! That's weird. No, it's just an alien. A what? Earth looks much bigger from space. Oh my gosh, what is that? We get an answer to this question in a very unexpected way. My card, young earthling. Cygnus Morphobus Lactose. Maximus Gluteus Grininin. Takes seven minutes to pronounce. You forget what you said at the beginning by the time you get to the end. Just call me Ziggy! The children are deported to the land I fear most. CGI land! It's impossible. It can't be this big. Uh, Jacob, can we make that joke? How do you think we got you in here? You made us smaller, didn't you? No, I made your expectations bigger! Whoa! Jacob, please! The aliens want to show the kids a collection of even more space history, but we're not here for a history lesson. We're here to learn how to make a TV show. Wait, what? Why not? So I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit. You got a good crew, Sheila. You should let them do their jobs. They may surprise you. But you don't understand. As a producer, I'm supposed to keep on top of everyone. And just like that, 15 minutes into the film, Sheila's character arc has ended. Round of applause for character development. Let's go. I know I tend to nitpick, but I cannot justify a low quality JPEG of Zando zipping across the screen at completely random rhythms. Also during this educational portion, it'll randomly cut away to the kids looking like they're hostage victims on TV. After the children have been gone for a little bit, astronaut captain Charles P. Conrad Jr. begins to wonder where they went off to. Ziggy transports the kids back in the nick of time. Where'd you two come from? Uh, uh, our first Star Scouts class. So let's talk about how we adapt to life. Even more educational stuff. Protect the population. No more education. Protect the population. 
No more, more education. education. The Cosmo Club now invites its viewers to call in with questions for Captain Pete. Oh, you call anonymous. You yeah. call anonymous. I, I can't. They know me. They know my voice. They'll know me. Please, you got to do it for me. I'm begging you. Astronaut Captain Charles P. Conrad Jr. gives some insight on how to eat, sleep, and even crap in space. Heather begins to get criticized for her sloppy camera work. Uh, Heather, you're falling asleep at the wheel, honey. Whenever Mr. Wembley walks into the- Oh, I'm so sorry! <sighs> oh my gosh. Mr. Wembley claims that the show is gonna be a complete failure, but within seconds he is proven wrong. This show is finished. Wembley guy was way wrong. The phone started ringing off the hook. Why does he dislike the show so much? I'm not really sure. Some people were just born to hate. The next morning after the successful show, the children are all hanging out and eating breakfast together. There was a news reporter interviewing another old buddy, Captain Dick Gordon. Correct. Who knows? You might become astronaut heroes like our buddies, Pete Conrad and Dick Gordon. Then you too can become Star Scouts. So join Zendo and me, Siggy, on the next adventure of Star Scouts Discover NASA. So what did I learn from this? Well, in order to have a successful TV show, you need a script, a clipboard, lipstick, cue cards, a camera crew, supporting cast, extortion, and who could forget? Interactions with beings beyond human comprehension. You betcha. There's also extra footage during the credits, but it's really nothing new. So if anyone knows anything, let me know. Also, while we're talking about the credits, it's honestly beautifully dramatic. I think after today's video, I'm finally ready to be the producer of the Topic Watch show. And yeah, I will catch you all next time. <sighs> Why does this always happen to me? What the heck? That was weird. Thank you for not trying to take up your idea for me. Oh, I did.